And just like that, another Halloween season comes to an end. This year was pretty cool uh, because we went about things a little bit different. Not only did we try a couple new experiences, but we went back and revisited some old experiences in new ways. Uh, we had my family come visit a, a Not Scary Farm for the first time. And we did a couple things with the kids to see how their reaction was to everything. I think for the most part, uh, it was a very positive experience. This was a really fun season. I hope it was for you too. Of a weird year, it was different. Uh, things, things felt off in some points, but they also felt right on in others. This year was um, the year that I think a lot of the big events really felt um, the brunt of uh, the low staffing and the scare actor dropouts throughout the year, knots especially. I say that because I, I went you know six or seven times this year, and I know that this isn't really just an anecdotal kind of thing. Uh, there have been numerous people that have been saying that uh, that every experience, every time they go, the experience is different, for better or for worse. And I think a lot of that has to do with the staffing. And a lot of people nowadays, it's becoming some sort of weird trend to um, be uh, borderline abusive to some of these scare actors. I know there were increased reports this year um, about altercations and, and interactions with scare actors uh, that scare actors have had with guests that were not necessarily positive, uh, whether it be physical altercations, verbal abuse, any kind of harassment, that sort of thing. Can I just say to people that are going to these haunts, please stop doing that. It's not a cute TikTok trend. Stop. I know I'm just an old person shouting to get off my lawn, but all it takes is one pebble, two pebbles to sink an entire ship. And if you want these events to keep going um, at the top of their game, you got to stop throwing the stones, man. I'm going to stop being heavy. And I just wanted to, I want to, uh, I want to have a chat about my top 10 mazes and experiences uh, that I did this year. Before I get into the top 10, because I did a lot this year. I wish I had done more, but I did a lot more this year than I had done in previous years. I want to just give a couple shout outs to a couple honorable mentions. And I, I have two this year that didn't make my top 10, but they were still memorable, probably for similar reasons. But anyway, um, so uh, my honorable mentions are the Pumpkin Shack at Shacktoberfest. It was a really cool maze um, with a couple little unique um, tidbits within the maze itself, that being um, <laughs> the mirror maze right in the middle tends to be a borderline dangerous sometimes, I think, if there's too many people packed into there. Uh, when we went the second time at night after the witching hour, um, there was nobody there to kind of um, regulate the amount of people that go through the entrance and out the exit. So if you get a lot of people in there, it can get very claustrophobic. Nonetheless, it was still a lot of fun. Other than that, it was pretty much a generic red barn um, farm kind of haunt. Uh, the chainsaw actors, the scarecrows, the pumpkin guys, um, the mid animatronics and things like that. I don't think going through this maze without the boys would have been the same experience. I think most, I drew 80% of my experience of this maze um, just watching them and having fun watching them go through it. And it made it memorable. I still had a lot of fun. The other honorable mention uh, is Trick or Treat at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. While this still will never be, will never have the charm that it had when it first started, um, being able to knock on doors and ring doorbells and not knowing whether you were going to get a trick or a treat from the host of each house, it still seemed like it was better than it was last year. They kind of revamped it a little bit. They made uh, some of the experiences a little bit less generic and it seemed like they put a little bit more uh, care into it this year. Again, we went through it with the kids and I drew most of my experience uh, of that maze just uh, just watching the kids experience it and had I gone through with just Andrea it would have been fun but I don't think it would have been as fun and I don't think it would have been as memorable because I used both of these uh, honorable mention mazes as um, testing grounds to see if the kids could handle haunts like this on this level so we'll get into the top 10 start at the bottom obviously and go all the way up to the top number 10 Reign of Terror and Thousand Oaks. This is a little different from every other maze on here because this event relies solely on this haunted house. It's not a maze that's part of a bigger event. It's just this, this the event is the haunted house. You know, it takes you 20 to 30 minutes to get through this. And this is a house that sits there year round. The company that owns Reign of Terror, that operates Reign of Terror, 
they rent this space from the John's Marketplace year in, uh, throughout the year, which is why they're able to do some smaller events such as the, the, the Halloween, the, the holiday one during Christmas, Valentine's Day, halfway to Halloween as kind of almost fundraiser events. I think it's a school club that actually owns it and puts it on every year. It's a school or a church, it's one of the two. But that being said, because it's just this, this maze, it's just one solid, you know, just one solid maze. You can really tell that they really put tender loving care into this maze. All their attention goes into it. Um, every year they, uh, they change two or three of the rooms over, I think it's over 25 rooms that you end up walking through. And they make sure that you don't get bored with the two dimensional um, jump scares, uh, that you're always on the lookout for something else. They always try to make something happen that you are not expecting every a couple rooms, just to kind of keep you on your toes. There's a couple stops throughout to keep it from getting too crowded in parts, which I think is fantastic, because if you didn't have those little floodgates, uh, you could potentially get massive buildups in certain parts of that maze just because there's some stuff that um, plays on different fears than other. So, Reign of Terror, number 10. Number nine was a new maze this year at a new park that we went to, which was at Castle Dark, Night Shift. I don't know if um, this is the first year that they've done this or not, um, but it's the first year that we ever went to Castle Dark. So, um, if they've done Night Shift before, bravo. I have always been a fan of uh, interactive props throughout mazes. Uh, I really liked when Plague Productions revamped Trick or Treat and turned into Trick or Treat Lights Out and had the lights kind of flickering on and off. This didn't have that sort of <laughs> interaction, but they, they gave you flashlights and it was pitch black in there and you had to kind of find your way out. The Haunted Hayride actually did this a few years ago too with the pitch black maze where they gave you like a little one, lot, one watt lantern that you really couldn't see anything um, with it, but it was really your only guiding light through the maze. So you get this you get this light and you gotta go through this toy factory in the middle of the night, and there's, you know, haunted dolls and, and toys and stuff. And the kids absolutely loved it. Jensen still talks about it. And it was just, it was fun because it was different. We didn't have that experience in any other maze. And uh, it really helped it to stand out in a field of very similar kind of experiences. Number eight. Surprisingly enough, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. I said it when I went, uh, I was not expecting it to be that good. And especially for, I think this is their third week in operation, their fourth week in operation, something like that. And they're still going and getting it. The actors on the Haunted Hayride, props to you, man. You guys did a great job. Uh, again, I experienced it with my kids and they could not stop talking about it all week. They had such a fun time. And you guys, even though the Hayride itself was basically the same thing as it was last year, it's amazing what the addition of energetic scare actors will bring to that experience. There were a couple scares in there that we were not expecting, that were new, that we just had a lot of fun with. And and I give props to 13th Floor for really um, revamping the Hayride and, and getting it trending in the right direction. Number seven, Holidays in Hell. This was a revamp of the one they did back in, I believe, 2019. And I loved it then and I loved it now. It was basically the same maze as it was, just they threw it down on the lower lot in a different, in a different spot. But this maze is awesome. The, the story of it is cool. The vibe of it is cool because you can find terror in every season throughout the year. And John Murdy just found a way to do that. And they really um, upped the smells this year. I, a lot of people I, um, I'd heard from, and myself included, really remember that whatever the smell was in the uh, St. Patrick's Day <laughs> portion of the maze, it was like bloody chocolate goo guts. Whatever it was, it'd be nasty. It'd be awesome. Number six, my sole entry from Six Flags Fright Fest, Willoughby's Resurrected. We went opening weekend to Fright Fest and it was, it was a bit of an experience. We were let down because Saw and Conjuring were not done yet and they wouldn't be done for another few weeks after that. And it seemed like they really got hit hard with the low staffing. There were like, there were mazes that we went through that just seemed like they would have been phenomenal. Like truth or dare, I, I, seen, I saw videos of that where the, with the scare actors in it, that's a great maze. But it seemed like the only maze that had scare actors in it was Willoughby's Resurrected. And we had so much fun. It's, it's a generic haunted mansion type thing, you know, a, a paranormal hotel sort of uh, vibe, but it just, 
if you if you have energetic scare actors, it makes all the difference. And uh, the theming of this was cool. The props were really cool. The design was cool. It was loud. It was uh, it had a really cool score that ran throughout most of the maze. And this was the one maze that we went through that we really remember and enjoyed on that night. It was a fun night, don't get me wrong, but that was the maze that really was memorable from the rest of them. So now we'll get into the top five. Obviously, I am incredibly biased, and if you haven't noticed, I haven't put anything from Knots on here yet. But I'm going to now, and that is one of the new mazes that they did was Room 13. Um, it was my least favorite of the three new ones, but it was one of my favorites this year. This maze seems like it was a long time coming. They they put so much effort and attention to detail into this maze and really developed the story of the Devil's Elixir and its origins uh, to a T. And they explained kind of everything that they had been hinting at in the Goring 20s over the past few years. This maze doesn't really play so much off of jump scares as it does just going through and experiencing what happened in the events leading up to the distribution of the Devil's Elixir. The story uh, was rich and, and deep and it really sucks you in from the very beginning when the bouncer lets you go uh, into the speakeasy. It was just an all around fun time. Room 13 was really good. And it's something I hope that they keep for years to come because it really works well with that scare zone. And it just makes sense to kind of have that around. Until they decide to change the vibe of that whole portion of the park, I think Room 13 should stay. And I'm hoping that it does. Number four uh, was Chucky, Kill Count. This maze I didn't really expect much from. I actually just expected a kind of generic um, monster icon maze where he was just kind of going around and uh, killing innocent kids. Essentially, that's really what it was, but it was fun. Uh, there was a lot, you get squirt, you get squirted a lot in this maze. There's a lot of a lot of blood squirts, but the kills were, were, were interesting. There wasn't a lot of jump scare actors as Chucky. Of course, the nine foot Chucky is going to be going to live in my head for a while. That was a fantastic surprise. I did not see that coming and I didn't expect to hear it sound like a, a, a demon dragon beast either. It was so much fun. Uh, the It was entertaining to walk through with the exception of a really thick conga line and having to stop every six feet. It was a fun maze. This maze was a lot of fun. And then of course, this was my favorite for most of the season up until recently and that was Chilling Chambers. Uh, Chilling Chambers is the perfect love letter to the last 50 years of what Not Scary Farm has done. It's fun because it's not just a mishmash of old iconic mazes from the past. It has a story and it has a recurring theme throughout the whole thing with the keeper letting loose the monsters of the Chilling Chambers and uh, allowing us to experience them one at a time. I was not lucky enough to go to Not Scary Farm when most of these mazes were a part of the park. So being able to experience just a room or two of them all smashed together was more than I could have ever asked. And not only that is this maze seems to go forever. The maze is so long and it never becomes stale because it has so much to draw from. This is another one that I hope that they just keep around for years and years and years and it doesn't just outlive its five year plan and be turned into something else. This maze has the potential to be the legendary maze that just stays. Number two, Monstros. We went to Universal on its second week and it was super duper crowded, of course, but the first maze we went through was the most memorable and that was Monstros. I really went into detail about what I thought about John Murdy's approach to these events now and his storytelling is by far his favorite thing. He loves to, sto he loves to tell stories. And that really shines through in Monstros. The story here is so much fun. And because he enjoyed telling the story, you can tell he enjoyed putting all of his attention into this maze above the rest of them that were at the event. Monstros was just, it was gory, it was disgusting, it was it was vile, but it was just a blast to go through. The, the animatronics and the props and the way they did some of the scares was, it's gonna live on with me for a while. I hadn't had that much fun in a maze probably since La Llorona. So it really had the El Cucuy La Llorona vibe to it, but I think this was better. That brings me to my top maze. Um, you've probably already figured it out that it is um, Cinema Slasher. 
Cinema Slasher was uh, an under the radar kind of maze. I wasn't really looking too forward to it. I didn't obviously put much thought into what it would be going into the haunt season. Um, it was the one that was in the boardwalk ballroom that I really never got a handle on because it's, you know, they were building it inside a building that you couldn't see in. But the maze, it turned out wonderful. The, from the very beginning, even walking past the, uh, the ticket taker in the front that's doing his little spiel, immediately hearing the uh, let's all go to the lobby theme, getting warbled and, and turned into a, an evil theme, immediately sets the tone. The smell of blood and popcorn really just kind of puts this weird, this weird vibe deep in your gut that tells you you're not supposed to be there. The story of walking into, walking through the movie screens and experiencing these, um, these films as one of the characters is really, it's a third dimension that for some reason John Cook always seems to find. It's a simple premise, but it works and he makes it work every single time. And it's a super long maze, another super long maze. Uh, it seems to kind of go forever and it was just, Again, it's a lot of fun. My family loved it when we went on the 8th. That's how I know it's good <laughs> because they're very critical about things like that. And I think that this just, I feel about this maze how I felt about Mesmer back in 2021. It's something that I'm going to look forward to doing again next year. Already, that says a lot. <laughs> anyway, that's my list. I know it's probably different from a lot of people's, but it's probably very similar. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have the same names up there just in different orders and whatnot. But I would love to see what everybody else's list is if you want to throw them down there. And uh, let's talk.